Hello and welcome to our show, Lead Me Home. I am Mary Beth Maestri. It is no secret that our world is going through a time of turmoil, evil, confusion, and that applies to our little beautiful country of Belize as well. My next guest is a convert to the Catholic faith, and she sees this as well, and she realizes the urgency of eternal salvation, and as well with eternal salvation, moving away from the fires of hell. So let me now welcome you, uh, welcome you to my guest, Mrs. Linda Price. Hello, Linda. Pleased to meet you. Thanks for having me on the show, oh. Mary Beth. Okay, wonderful, Linda. Okay. So, um, Linda, what I normally do is ask all my guests to give me a little past history so that viewers can see kind of where you are and where you're going to, to, to come to. So that, that, um, that involves your parents, how many brothers and sisters, schools you went to, um, something about your family, you know, early in your early life. Okay, I was born to Hebert and Nora Eldrington. Mm -hmm. They had 17 of us. 17 children. Uh -huh. Three died as babies. Okay. Living 14, mm -hmm. and one lately died when he was about 50 something, an adult. Okay. But they cared for us, and 13 survive. So now alive, we have eight, seven boys and six girls. Okay. I used to go to um, St. Andrew's School after the hurricane had taken. Mm -hmm. My father had gone to Stan Creek, but then after the hurricane, we had to move because it was devastating, mm -hmm. and we settled in um, San Ignacio. I went to St. Andrew's Anglican School there, and at eight, we moved back to where um, my father lived originally, here in Belize City. Mm -hmm. And I went to St. John's Primary School, where I finished up until I started Wesley College. Okay. I got a scholarship, you know, when I was about 11. Smart girl. <laughs> <laughs> and my brother as well, okay. but I had prayed. I said, Father, <laughs> I said, Father, I don't want to hear mom says, oh, I make so many sacrifices. So I said, I want to hear that if I fail. I said, please, Father, let me get a scholarship. And he made so much of us get scholarship. And go. a priest once said, you ask him for this, he gives you and a whole gives land. You so many Ellingtons have gotten scholarship, thanks to God, okay. up until university level. Wow, wonderful. <laughs> so you did uh, high school there? As well as? I, I went to Wesley College and then I did six form year, um, two years, two years of six form. Okay, mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then, um, so are you going to church at this time? Does your mother? Um, you? I would go sometimes in the morning at All Saints. Mm -hmm. I was, you know, I used to like going to church. And I could recall once a priest saying, um, Father Eric Richards, he said, um, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and don't defile it. And like that stayed with me. That's something else. Uh -huh, that. that stayed with me. And um, now, now your mother, she, she was uh, an Anglican. She was an Anglican. And, and, and my father was a Methodist. He was a Methodist. Yes. He may not have been as practicing as, as she, no, she, she practiced no. his faith the way she did. So she took you all to church. Yeah. To call the children to church. A lot uh -huh. of us went, in her, she would take us, nearly all of us, you know, mm -hmm. she was a lazy woman. So mm -hmm. she would get us ready and we would all go to church on Sundays. But um, like you said, she was sort of the disciplinarian. Yeah. I like one little story she, she told, uh, something you told me. She said when you all had moved back to Belize about the girls of Belize, what was her story there? She said, because she had six of us girls. Sure. You say, um, big Belize, responsibility. Big responsibility. Mm -hmm. She said Belize has a lot of bad girls and you all won't join them. Yes. Mm -hmm. She was very serious because she doesn't, it wasn't a matter of her what age you were, mm -hmm. but once you were living in her home and you're not doing what she says, mm -hmm. she's going to administer, you know, whatever punishment, mm -hmm. because um, I guess she stick to what God said, what do not spare the, word, the rod and spoil the child. Yes, um, and that was, was her very belief, strict, uh -huh. her faith. That she was faith. going to the Anglican church yeah. and taking you And she was along. a member of the Mother's Union from, you know, almost all her life. Mm -hmm. Now, 
you come, you grow, uh, I think like around 1450, you're going to have a pivotal point. And there are going to be four points you mentioned to me mm -hmm. that are going to bring you into a questioning state, stage of your life. Four things, they're going to happen, not, not one right after the other, over a period of time. And can you tell me these four things that you quite rec you, you recall? I could recall when my brother was studying law, when they would come home for the holidays, they would be at the family house in 6th Street, mm -hmm. and they would speak about different, you know, like political issues or religious. So I was passing, mm -hmm. and I overheard a friend of his said, boy, you know something? It's just a lot of liar white man who wrote that Bible, you know. What's that? Trick the black people in. Liar. So so liar <laughs> repeat that again. Liar white men who wrote the Bible to trick the black trick. people. <laughs> so I okay. said to myself, I said, well, He's starting to be a lawyer. He's smart. I say, well, I thought, I say, okay. You know, I believed him. Sure. Then, but shortly after that, a friend of mine, we met up the 8th of March. Her name was Debbie. She said she was going to Gracie Rock to swim. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay. Because it was 9th of March would be the holiday. The huh? holiday. So they were, she was going on a class trip, was it? A class trip. In, okay. she, she used to go to St. Ignatius. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So I said, okay, Debs, we're going to talk how the trip gone. If anybody sits after you, mm -hmm. or Quinta after you. So I had a stats there. Sure, 15 year old girls <laughs> so talking about stats. the boys. Yeah, the stats. I love that. <laughs> so we so said, bye. I said, okay. So when I went as planned, the, the day. Saturday evening, I called out to her by her house. I saw her mom sweeping up the yard. But I said, oh, my mom usually sweep the yard in the morning. Mm -hmm. Her mom is sweeping it in the evening. That's strange. So I called, I said, Debbie. And her mom said, Debbie gone. So I waited. I said, she probably went to the store to get some, you know. Mm -hmm. And her mom said, Debbie drowned. So I was so shocked mm -hmm. because at that time, Belize didn't have so many people who died like no. Yes. You know, that was you at, hardly rivers, heard. Uh, yeah. rivers. Probably once a year or two, mm -hmm. you hear about people dying, but not like no way. Every minute yes. <laughs> you hear somebody die. Mm -hmm. So I went home, I was, I was shocked. I was saying, that man said that it's just a lot of lad, white man wrote the Bible to trick black people, but the Bible having about death mm -hmm. and having about heaven and hell, and I don't know what all. I say, hmm. I'm, I began wondering, questioning, sure. So the next day I went to church at All Saints. We met the Friday, she joined the Saturday. So the Sunday mm -hmm. at All Saints, after the church service, I asked the priest, I said, does heaven and hell really exist, Father? He said, I really, really do not know. Mm -hmm. And then I went home. Just before I got home, I, I prayed. I stood up by, in front of one of our neighbor's house, the hillocks, and I said, um, Father, you said that, you said, this is my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased, listen to him. Then Jesus said that heaven and earth would pass away before his word pass away, and in having who all will not inherit heaven, mm -hmm. neither the fornicators, the whoremongers, gossip mongers, these drunkards, adulterers, lesbians, homosexuals, people who have illicit sexual unions. I said, I am, I don't like hellfire, and I don't like the idea of these worms biting you on this and that and, and, being, seen, burnt, huh? and being burnt. <laughs> so please reveal to me. You just said that you reveal your mysteries to little ones. Mm -hmm. So I said, please reveal your mysteries to me because I really don't like to get burned. Mm -hmm. I said, because the man says so and so, mm -hmm. said a friend, then mm -hmm. um, <laughs> said a friend said so and so. The, pre the girl drowned and then the priest, the priest. said, he don't know if heaven and hell there. I said, so please. Reveal your mysteries, because Jesus here revealed mysteries to little ones. And I forgot all about the prayer. Okay, all about that. So it is going to come up later on. I mean, you, yeah. the prayers are the going answer. to be answered. Mm -hmm. But there was those four things, especially the last one. You don't want to be burnt. No. <laughs> no. In hellfire. <laughs> for all eternity. Yeah, for the, so, so, okay. So is this a really pivotal point in your life? So now let's move on with your life. So while going to um, Wesley, you do meet your future husband, don't you? Yeah. Okay. We were in Six Swamp together and he was mm -hmm. a very nice and quiet person. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't set out for him thinking that he would be my boyfriend. Sure. We got to be very good friends. And then he went to study. And then I remember once a person, um, one of our teachers, after we graduated, they said, this is there's a, this, there, 
this is a time for husband hunting. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I got their own husband I want one too. <laughs> Why not? Everybody's going looking. In fact, in fact, from what you tell me, there were two opportunities <laughs> were there. <laughs> two guys liked you. Not only him, you had another guy who liked you at the time. So you had an option of two husbands. <laughs> <laughs> no, not quite. They were boyfriend. I mean, just good friends. Good yes. friends. So, so um, we dated. I took him to um, prom. Okay. Uh -huh. And then um, we became very good friends. He would come and visit me every every night. But under the guidance that of your so. strict parents. Right. Of course. Yes. Yes. Viewers, let's understand that. Back in, that, in those days, because this is you're in sixth form already. That was when I started working. Oh, you couldn't oh. court before. You couldn't even mm -hmm. court before. Mm -hmm. So now mm -hmm. she's working. Right after you get out of sixth form, you start working. Mm -hmm. So now on his, he's gone off to, to university. But on his vacations back home, you courting. But please, this is for all of you all out there. This is how courting should be. They should be in the house under the guidance of the parents. Even though you're a big woman working already. But they do give you leeway. Yeah? You're allowed to go for walks. Yeah. Tell me about some of those walks. I, I could recall sometimes we'd go to Lopez Matea Park uh -huh. and David, we would talk and then like, he had this, like he didn't want to go home, he didn't want to leave every time. And then I'm getting sleepy because Ma used to <laughs> teach us to go to sleep at 8, she trained us. Uh -huh. So when he's there at 9, 9.30 and I'm getting tired and you have, like you don't have no intention to go home. So I'd say, I'm happy, you know, sleeping? <laughs> he said, no. <laughs> so after some time, I said, well, look like you don't want to go home. If, if you don't want to go home, then let's get married then, because look like you don't want to go home. And but you just but flirted. Because I just, said, just, yes, like that. Just, like I just <laughs> <laughs> I need. <laughs> so you get so tired of this. If you want to just get home, you <laughs> said enough things already. <laughs> so you just blurted that out. <laughs> so um, I went to work the next day, and I got this phone call, and he said, um, just from the bank. He said, I said, what do you win for? He said, I borrowed $5,000. I said, what is that for? For us to get married? I said, oh, okay then. Oh, oh. one week so later. Then, <laughs> you know? Uh -huh. So shortly after that, he came to the house. He spoke to Ma and Pani, you know, asked mm -hmm. permission for me to get married. And then we got there married. again, viewers, ask permission to get to married. Get married. How and lovely. then Ma said yes. Mm -hmm. Is and then you got married in All Saints Church. Okay, second of October, nineteen seventy-six. So you, you got married. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, what was his faith? Tell he, me a little about his. His faith. mom and dad were Nazarenes, mm -hmm. and he he told me that he was not baptized. That he never used to go to church because he never liked it. He said, um, like going to church, and then he 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 wasn't really. Are practicing like somebody who would go to you know church every Sunday or whatever, but he was very very kind more than those who would go more than some good Christians. Yes, because huh? I remember once a person who was like very, you know, she was in need. Mm -hmm. We had just come from Chetamal and we had got this lot and lot of groceries. This was the type of person he was, and she said that she needed groceries, and I took all the groceries almost that we bought <laughs> and I gave it to her. Mm -hmm. Then she came to me and she said, "Girl, um." Linda needs some money to pay the rent. So I went to him and I said, boy, Dove, she needs 200 and something to pay her rent. Mm -hmm. And he put his hand in his pocket and gave yes. it to her. So yes. So, mm -hmm. so you know, he There's was a good very, heart. Very, uh -huh, he a, a good, good heart. Uh -huh. But let, that, let's backtrack a little. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we see the good heart and, and, yes. and lots of, lots of, in fact, an atheist, atheists have good hearts too. And I just have to believe in God. They don't realize all the goodness that they have <laughs> is coming from the God within anyway. Okay, so well, let's go back to another story. You said he came to the house and went through with the $5,000. He had a little plan of everything he would do to buy, to get ready for this marriage. Yes. And tell me that little story quickly. <laughs> that was so cute because he used to be a man that was always in, con when I said that, he was very organized. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. he came with his little notebook and in there had, you know, what all he would buy. <laughs> his sofa set, uh -huh. the fridge, <laughs> this, that, that. So I'm thinking to myself, this man will think I'm really silly. I'm not seeing anything. anything. So I said, you know, you forgot something on that paper. He said, what? 
I see I forgot to put the pillowcase. <laughs> you forgot to put the pillowcase. <laughs> so, so you made your contribution. <laughs> pillowcases. pillowcases. <laughs> that is so funny. I love when you told me that story. Okay, we're going to have to come to a break. <laughs> uh, when we, uh, viewers, we're going to come to a break now and continue on, on Linda's story. But I can tell you something. Why, when I interviewed Linda, we just had belly full laughs every so often. She and I would just break into laughter. So when we come back, we'll continue on, on her story and we're going to see her turning point. We'll be right back. Years ago, when I started acting, modeling, and singing in Mexico, my Catholic faith was not the center of my life. It took me many years to discover that success, fame, money, and all the pleasures of the world were not going to fulfill me. I got to a point in my life where I thought I had everything, but I realized something was missing. Thankfully, I began a faith journey that brought me back to God and the home to the Catholic Church. You can too. Discover more at catholicscomehome.com. Welcome back, viewers. So let's now continue on Linda's story. So as we, when we left off, Linda's married, and she did get her pillowcases, didn't you? I hope they were beautiful floral pillowcases <laughs> <laughs> to adorn the wedding bed. Okay, so we'll continue in her life. So um, you're married now. Are you still living in Belize, or where are you now? Okay, I'm living in Belize on West Street, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and. Um, my son, my first child, is born, born. in 1978. Okay. Um, David, David Jr. Mm -hmm. Shortly after that, I was transferred to Belmopan, but then we went to live in Cayo. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I, I had to commute. I had to commute every day. Mm -hmm. And um, it was the Monday before Ash Wednesday mm -hmm. when I went to work that particular morning. I noticed a lot of things, you know, but it didn't come to anything until about three. I had been seeing a lot of little things, and so, and I'm saying, what is this? So around three o'clock, the morning before Ash Wednesday, 1979, I picked up the phone to speak to my mom. You know, who'd take a little break. Mm -hmm. And I saw the whole crucifixion scene outside. She's just on the cross, the two thieves, you know the hill, mm -hmm. beside his head, his heart dripping with blood, it was pierced, and the blood was dripping, forming a lot of cross. Then the crown of thorns came about three seconds later, mm -hmm. golden brown, dripping with blood. And I was watching it, and like when I was watching it, like light was being flashed into me. I just felt something like that. And I told the officers, the girls, I said, girls, you, you see anything out there? And they said, no. So I went to tell our permanent secretary, his name was Mr. Rudy Castillo, uh -huh. and he used to tell us about Jesus. You know, everywhere you go, you have somebody that is loyal to the Lord and who would tell you about Jesus. Plus, he was a Catholic, Mr. Rudy Castillo. Yeah, he a was a very Catholic. nice man and Catholic. He, so I went to tell him what I saw outside. Mm -hmm. So when I got into his office, there in the middle of the office, I saw Blessed Mother Mary standing, mm -hmm. and she had Jesus in her arms, but Jesus was already dead. Okay. And then just like in the Catholic Church, we have her, the Pieta. But she wasn't sitting, she was standing. Stand, okay, the mother holding the dead Jesus uh -huh. after he's taken. And then like, people were walking the in, the, in the background. People mm -hmm. were walking, you know, like they're going towards the scene. I didn't know that when you die, you, didn't, you weren't dead for sure or whatever. These strange things. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I told him, I said, um, I said, P.S., out there I'm seeing the vision of the crucifixion in there. <laughs> Obviously, I'm seeing Blessed Mother Mary. She's mm -hmm. standing, she has Jesus held like that. He's already dead and in her arms. and. Mm -hmm. she, She's watching me, and the people are walking like, towards the scene. And he said, okay, Mrs. Price, say, don't worry, what you're seeing is known as a vision. Okay. It's, it's all in the, this little New Testament. And he gave a little, a small little one. A New he Testament. Said, uh -huh, uh -huh. He gave it to mm -hmm. me. I just wanted to make sure, you know. Yes, then I went uh, back to my seat. Mm -hmm. I went back to my, um, to my office. And then I le when I left 5 o'clock, I said, um, I won't tell David who doesn't go to church and so. I will come and tell my mother, mm -hmm. Ma, this thing is true. Because she just says, only who continue to the end will get the crown of eternal life. I'll tell her, Ma, this whole thing is true because I see this what thing. Saying, sure. And so I got on the bus 
And the last thing I did before the bus drove off was to look and see if the scene was still out there. It was still and out it there. Was. Mm -hmm. So that was like from 3 o'clock to five. 5 when you took the bus. Mm -hmm. And then when I looked on the windshield of the bus, I saw Jesus' face big. But he wasn't watching me. He was like watching over the crowd like that, you know. Mm -hmm. I didn't say anything to anybody because, you know, people don't like to believe these things. So mm -hmm. I didn't say anything. So you went home to your mother and so you're going to tell. Mm -hmm. When I, it was very, when I was, um, when the bus was coming back to Belize, when we were coming to Belize, the bus stopped at um, Hatteville to let off some passengers. And when I looked down, you know, as the people were going down, and I looked back, instead of seeing the face of Jesus, I saw, like, he vanished, Jesus' face gone. And I saw the pitchfork when I said the devil half. And then I said, what? Not tell me this thing not true. Then I opened the New Testament the to the book that, 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 that you had. had given us. Uh -huh. And in there, remember Jesus said, follow me. Mm -hmm. And I said what he had said, I just repeated, um, it is written, thou shalt not put the Lord thy God to the test. And the pitchfork vanished. But I make sure I checked, you know, the five prongs white hat. Mm -hmm. I said, wow, not tell me this thing not true. Then I mentioned it to the people in the bus. I saw, you know, the vision of the crucifixion. So when I got to Belize, on the left-hand side, there was this gas station, but at that time there was no gas station. And there was the evil one, you know, like they say in the Bible, busy, 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 seeking mm -hmm. whom he may devour. Mm -hmm. Very busy like that. Mm -hmm. And then I said the same thing and it vanished and it went to tell this little Mrs. Rita Avila that had, the husband had been talking to. But she was very obedient and she was told not to see anybody that day. So I like talked to, like a picture of Jesus I saw there, like he came to life, like a white cross came on his forehead, and like was doing so. And like in my heart I was saying, Jesus, I'm not afraid because I'll not take a cab. Because when I say it is written, although I see the evil one, it is written, thou shalt not put the Lord thy God into this, it vanishes. So I went, I went home. Now, let's, you also, this, this lady you went to, but you had been going to rosary there. You mm -hmm. doing, it was like a rosary group, prayer group, prayer and they group. would pray the rosary. Yes. But you tell me, tell me a little story about that rosary. You wouldn't get there in time to say the whole rosary. Yeah? <laughs> Go. No. And um, mm -hmm. I used to, and it's very, it, we had been um, told by, she had told us to go to the bishop for his blessing, because the Holy Spirit saying and work outside of his church. Yes. At the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. And so I had gone with my little ones um, for the blessing from Bishop Martin. He was mm -hmm. a bishop at the bishop time. At the mm -hmm. And um, when he saw him, he smiled. He said he would just trust on a bee because he knew that no Ellington is a Catholic. Mm -hmm. But he just said, I will not question, I will just obey. Mm -hmm. And he gave his blessing. It was so beautiful. I felt like a whole river of water just washed me. Like I actually saw it because I have this gift. And um, I went home. Mm -hmm. Then subsequently, we went to say the rosary in homes. But I used to say this rosary take too long. And I used to go out the fifth decade. <laughs> <laughs> the Holy Spirit had used this lady as the leader, this is um, Santos. And she in a nice little voice said, um, when he used to come, you know, late every minute, every time, she said quite nicely, Linda there, don't come to the rosaries late there. Don't keep the Lord waiting. I thought to myself, I say, what is wrong with that woman? I already come into the rosary. She doesn't satisfy me. <laughs> you come? No. <laughs> She's saying, don't keep the Lord waiting. No. How oh, they say they hear the Lord? And I know he had the Lord. <laughs> so it. the next day, I was so shocked. I went up to pray by the, al by the you know, up, up you, by the altar at St. Joseph. Okay, you're going to church now. Mm -hmm. you, so you're to daily mass. You're going so to I, uh -huh. yes, because Mary brought me to the church. So I was going, I started going, uh, and then I um, was coming down. I passed the tabernacle. At mm -hmm. the time, I didn't even know it was tabernacle yeah, or anything sure. like that. So I just came down, and I heard Jesus' voice whisper from the little white bread. I heard him whisper, why do you recite my statutes but hate discipline? So he said, what? Then I get serious. I say, this thing, you know, this thing, this thing serious? Then the father was passing the same time, Father Kurt. Because a little white bird could never know what I was thinking the day before. Mm -hmm. Because I was, I was being corrected, you know? Yes. And I was, I didn't like it. So and I it was, does take discipline yes. to pray the rosary. Mm -hmm. So he said, um, so I said, Father, I just hear Jesus whisper from that little bird there. Why do you recite my statutes but hate discipline? Then I knew 
this thing was serious because in the Anglican church, I had never heard Jesus talk from, you know, the yeah, communion, the, the whole whatever. Uh -uh. So he said like this, and then in the Bible, Jesus said, this is my body, this is my blood. Unless we eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink of his blood, in our raise up on the last day. So I said, Father, um, I heard Jesus whisper from my little bird there, from my little house. Why do you reset my statutes but hate discipline? And then, I, then he said, well, he said, oh, Linda, there, that is something to think about. Mm -hmm. Then I realized that I had to change mm -hmm. because this was not a joke. This was not, it was uh -huh. not concept anymore, you said. Uh -huh. eh? It was real. This was the real Because life. his voice sounded, you know, mm -hmm. so beautiful, you know, like any human being voice, mm -hmm. like the ripple of waters or whatever, but mm -hmm. beautiful. And um, I said, mm -hmm. I have to change. Okay, so you've been coming to church on your own anyway. You've been coming to, to, to it was um, St. Joseph's, huh? mm -hmm. St. Joseph's Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. You've been coming to Mass daily. Right. You felt Mary was leading you there. Mm -hmm. This happens in the church. And now, so you're going to go through a, com a total conversion. Huh? conversion. You, for the Kurt is going to start preparing you. What mm -hmm. is, how does... Um, he would give me classes from the catechism uh -huh. in the evenings. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, he would give me classes, and then sometime later, I was to get baptized, uh -huh. you know, Father Caetano baptized me, and I was later confirmed mm -hmm. by Bishop Wright Bishop at St. Joseph's. Joseph. Uh -huh. So you had come fully now into, into, the, into the faith. Into huh? full communion. Between Father Kurt preparing you, mm -hmm. um, Father Caetano baptizing mm -hmm. you, and Bishop Wright. Right. But, um, you're going to have an other priest, but before we go there, I just wanted to pull from the Bible what it does say about dreams and visions, in case viewers you're questioning Miss Linda here. So let me let me just uh, it says uh, right here, dreams and visions are very biblical. You can find this in Joel three verse one, and that says, "Then afterwards I will pour out my spirit upon all mankind. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams." and young men shall see visions. So uh, I added a few things onto it. Dreams do take, uh, take place while asleep, whereas usually visions while you're awake. However, you can have a vision within a dream. As, and I've mentioned on my, my show pre with all my previous guests, um, before God can, use, uh, God can use any means to communicate to his people. And we've seen it, huh? people, they've, people have mentioned the Bible or a book they've read, maybe even a song they've heard, other persons, priests, messages from a homily, or even a particular incident that happens to them, the death of a child or a terrible accident, anything that makes God wake, shake them and wake them up. Very often, if a dream is sent by God, it will be understood better afterwards. Sometimes there is a real and immediate urgency. If it is from God, the message will be made clear in due time. If they are in due time, and one will remember the dream when the time has come for the man message to be manifest. So, so you will, the dream will come back to you at that time. These dreams, and this part important, huh? these dreams and visions must be sub subject to our priests, and our pastors, so we do not make mistakes in matters of faith and moral morals. So understand that any dream that you, it's, I mean, I don't mean regular dreams. People have dreams every day, every night. I mean dreams pertaining to a message that you may feel may be coming from God. It has to be brought to the pri uh, priest or a pastor to vet it to see what, what they too can help you to, to sort it out. Um, because we have to test them against the world, the flesh, and the devil. We do have the devil prowling, so they too can come in the form of dreams. And usually, I think, with certain dreams, you get a peace that you know if it is of God and of the Holy Spirit. And if there is a feeling uh, of, of fear, it is because maybe something is in disorder, and it's time to work on it to get that peace back into our lives again. Huh? So you see it as that, Alinda, huh, just working on this, because uh, lots of people are, may have a fear, but they need to work on whatever they're going through to bring peace back. Because, and, um, mm -hmm. okay, because people struggle with um, different things, sure. the world, the flesh, the evil, mm -hmm. and it's a continual battle 
That's why Lord says we have to work out our salvation in fear and trembling. Mm -hmm. And it's constant. Mm -hmm. You just all cannot say, I'm saved. One, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. It takes mm -hmm. a long time for people to change. Mm -hmm. That's why the Lord said, do not delay your conversion to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And that's why he set up his church and realized so that he could get the sacraments because he said, without God, mm -hmm. it is impossible that man is saved. Okay. And long ago, God promised to send mm -hmm. the Savior okay. from the Virgin, you know, without... It's a constant thing. Oh, yeah, it's, it's never ending. Huh? Thing. Uh -uh. That's it. So, so you're going to stop work for a while because you feel the need to evangelize? <laughs> yes, I thought that the Lord wanted me to evangelize. The, 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 the vision was so powerful mm -hmm. that I thought that... I, I, I thought that um, God wanted me to go out and tell the people to repent, to change, that God is real, mm -hmm. to get their lives back on track and to be obedient. Because specifically, He loves of obedience, you know? The Father does not like disobedience. And the, the, the um, people, we are told that four reasons for our demise, He said tomorrow is promised to no one, hence the urgency mm -hmm. for anybody. Mm -hmm. The wages of sin is death. That's why he set up his church. You have the confessional. He said the blood of Christ, you know, wipe away every, everything and you're made clean. You start again. After three score and ten, you could be called. Anybody? Mm -hmm. And precious the Lord is the death of his sin. Like the little children at Fatima. Mm -hmm. They died at seven and nine. But then it's all a preparation because they changed. They did a lot of sacrifices because to get into heaven, you say, um, Mary told him, you have to say a lot of rosary first. Sure. I see the daily mass. Oh, yes, and they and, went, we may we celebrate it. We'll talk a little bit more about that, mm -hmm. if they, uh, the Fatima, miracles of Fatima. Yeah. So, yeah, so you decide, you might evangelize, but I think your, project, your brother encourages you to go back to work. My brother, he said, at least you can do that thing at work. Yes. You don't have to stay home. You don't have to stay home to evangelize. <laughs> <laughs> so you can work. So I applied and I got my a new position at Radio Belize. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to stop there okay. now, Linda. Okay, viewers, we'll stop here. But start, I would like you to start pondering everything Linda just said in this past section about um, eternal salvation. And again, she feels the urgency. So we'll continue on her story when we come back. Years ago, when I started acting, modeling, and singing in Mexico, my Catholic faith was not the center of my life. It took me many years to discover that success, fame, money, and all the pleasures of the world were not going to fulfill me. I got to a point in my life where I thought I had everything, but I realized something was missing. Thankfully, I began a faith journey that brought me back to God and the home to the Catholic Church. You can too. Discover more at catholicscomehome.com. Hello and welcome back. So we continue on Miss Linda Price's story now. As she continues, we see now that she's come into the Catholic faith and she's been helped along by several priests. She's been going to uh, St. Joseph's Church for daily Mass. Father Kurt has helped her along, Father Cayetano, and finally you're confirmed by Bishop Wright. But then she's where she lives, she comes, starts coming to Divine Mercy Church, don't you? Yeah. And you're going to have Father Sebastian as well, influencing your you. He encouraged you with the corporal and spiritual words of mercy. Tell me about that. One morning after Mass, he said, I want you all to go to your workplace and do a spiritual work of mercy. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, to myself, I said, I will obey. So I went to my workplace and all people who were just living together, maybe they had somebody else's husband and this and that. <laughs> so I went to them, I tell them, it is wrong, you know, you shouldn't do that because you're endangering your, your soul. Uh -huh. You know, you're, you're in grave trouble, you're committing a terrible thing. No, I thought that they would have said, thank you, Mrs. Price. Thank you for getting me out of the fires of hell. Thank you. But then the reaction was so terrible. That's the they opposite. Started, Scattering my files, scattering everything. You know, you have to do a lot of, you know, in government, there are a lot of deductions and so on. Mm -hmm. I was at this department and so much. I still continued. Then they broke, they got physical, they broke the calculator. Mm -hmm. then, it's, then after that, they did something to me, you know, mm -hmm. something horrible. Okay. I said, I went to the priest, I said, Father, I will die now because um, these people did something to me. 
And he said, Father Kretty, don't worry, Linda, you won't die. Mm -hmm. And he prayed for me. And then I could remember inviting the children in to come and eat Christmas Day. But the thing was so terrible that was happening interiorly, like, you know, something flopping in my foot or whatever, my leg. And it isn't like you could take a pill and drink. Mm -hmm. So I said, what is this? So I went to Benke because this priest's father, um, Jim Blunt, mm -hmm. so like to pray. So when I went to Benke, there he was, and I told him what happened. And so he prayed for me from about 9.30 till about 3. And then the thing at the time uh -huh, passed off. Mm -hmm. Then I realized that, you know, in the scriptures it says, God says, I hate the sin of disobedience, mm -hmm. I hate the sin of witchcraft. And I realized that after the experience, I realized that disobedience wasn't nice because that was a terrible feeling and many people died from it. And because they cannot say it and prove it in court, <laughs> yeah. but many people died from that. And it was the prayers. I went to the... It's just before that, I had gone to a lady that had said that she could you know, do something. Care. Mm -hmm. And um, the father was very angry, mm -hmm. the eternal father, because he showed me that he was angry. And I should go to his church, to his... Yes, to his, not to... Not, not to, to any of these little people. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so I did a good confession. Mm -hmm. And then I, the Father prayed with me, and I got healed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's when Linda was telling me this story, she said it was like the innocent lamb going to the slaughter. And exactly, Linda, that's exactly what it was. And I also mentioned to her, those people sitting in church also heard that message. None of them took it so literally. If only, if only all of us took it literally, the message that comes from the Bible brought through, through the priest. Huh? Okay, so we're moving along. But what I'd like to, add, to just mention here, that this is a gift. It's very biblical. Visions are gifts. We have gifts of the Holy Spirit. We have fruits of the Holy Spirit. And we have gifts of the Holy Spirit that are received especially at the time of confirmation. So this is a gift Miss Linda has been given. And also, she, the gift of, um, of the biblical, uh, quoting the Bible. Whenever I, anything is mentioned, she can come back right back with the, with the verse that... that aligns up with whatever the incident that we've been talking about. Uh, so this something is, is special and different. Not that all of us have not received this gift, like I said. In confirmation, it's there. But it's who chooses to use the gift and what they want to do with it. I think I could add here that um, uh -huh. there's this call to total surrender. Mm -hmm. Because I remember once when like, I felt the need to go deeper, mm -hmm. you know? Not only feeding the hungry and visiting yes. the sick and warning the which, are, which, are the, uh, which are the corporal works of mercy, mm -hmm. you are now going into the spiritual works I, of I mercy. Mm -hmm. I once, I remember after, I used to pray, you know, for many years. Because you say, if it um, draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. Mm -hmm. And then I used to pray a lot. And then um, I remember once seeing him by the window watching me. Then he faded away. And then I just got... Means like the Holy Spirit said, go and tell everyone that you have offended. Go and say sorry. Mm -hmm. So I went to the department where I worked. And sometimes we offend people in thought, word, and deed. Yes. And so I did that. I obeyed. And then um, one night while praying, I just said, Father, I said, after you going through all my suffering, you know, he lifted me up. I had been, I had resigned. I didn't have any job. He helped me get back one. He helped me in so many ways. Uh, although family, you know, like they, they never totally abandoned you, but they're Jesus was there. They're, uh, no, they, they, yeah. they're like mm -hmm. scared and they're like they're backing off. Then most people, whenever you begin to do the works for the Lord, like with the poor, they start to stigmatize you. Whatever sickness they have, they may give it to give you. It. <laughs> <laughs> they might say, we're not going to that car again. Linda, care home the people in a car. And they stop visiting you. You know, they, you if start yes. to get, oh, yeah, they yes. call it persecution. Persecution. Mm -hmm. And Jesus it says, was he, so was he. He was persecuted so I, as well. I could remember obeying. And then the night when I was praying, I said, um, I said, Father, after, after going through everything, you have been there for me. Despite sometimes I'm very disobedient and whatever, what makes you do it? In the middle of the room, you know, in the room, you really feel like a feeling of lone love, an ocean of love, indicating that is why. 
I said, why are you so merciful to people say that you don't exist? Then another feeling, like an ocean of mercy. That's why. I said, well, love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. And he poured. Then I shut my eye. I said, I have no other alternative but to give you my whole life. But then I'd already been doing the things. Mm -hmm. Remember, Jesus said, only those who do, will do. And that total surrender. That's it. That's and then when I surrender. shut my eye now, and it was maybe for about 35 years, I constantly going to daily mass or whatever. Anyway, when I shut my eye, like someone was pouring something into me. I never see who because I had my eyes closed. Mm -hmm. And when I opened my eyes to myself as a baby, but out of pure light. The Holy Spirit. Huh? Yeah. So when I told Father Sebastian about it, he said, okay, you're his true child now. You will see him and so on, so on, so on. So with that total surrender, he, he, as he say, um, the father pours out his spirit. That's what the father Jim said when I told him about it. He said, the father pours out his spirit, right, Linda, into the obedient. Mm -hmm. The scripture has it. Oh, yes. He said, the others are mm -hmm. bastards. He pours out his spirit mm -hmm. into the obedient. But it, 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 um, it comes with a lot of suffering because many people don't like to be rejected and don't and they prefer human respect and so on so so many people won't do things okay, no. they won't go that extra mile they won't go into the deep no 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 they say okay dear lord i love you up to this point up to this point no yeah. don't tell me about go and vis visit these mm -hmm. these prisoners because nobody will rub me down <laughs> so don't tell me to come visit this is patient i will not go i love you you know but i won't go so yes, we, ju just, we draw the so, line it's so, it's so it's when you give yourself everything. totally mm -hmm. so Okay, but and you're gonna have more suffering coming along, huh? Tell me what's gonna happen. In, uh, you have you have your children. You you decide to stay at home. You have how many children? No, I have five. Five children. Mm -hmm. How many grandchildren? Seven. Okay, seven grandchildren now, huh? But what's gonna happen to your marriage? Okay, quite out of the blue, in 1995, suddenly this happened. Okay, just going back. Mm -hmm. I told him, David, I say, um, boy, I two of us have short. good mm -hmm. jobs and so mm -hmm. let us, let me stay home and manage children like, oh, mom was always there for me. And he said, yes. That was the April I sent in my resignation. Mm -hmm. The January I sent in my resignation and the April I found out that he was, he was having an affair with a, with a young lady. Okay. And I was so shocked. Mm -hmm. And I, um, I admit it, I put the things by the door and he got mad and then he left. Mm -hmm. It was very hard, but I couldn't put up with it because at that time I was telling him the government was, um, you know, letting go people, into retrenching, then with the diseases, you mm -hmm. cannot, then your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, you cannot do things like that, mm -hmm. and you cannot, um, you know, that's very bad. Anyway, he left and I felt guilty, I think, somewhat because I put the things through the door. <laughs> and then after that, by the door, and I went into a deep, deep, deep depression. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I couldn't laugh. I couldn't cry. I was so shocked because the person who did it, she was a Catholic girl. Mm -hmm. And I always, you know, read, I read about St. Maria Goretti and St. John of Arc and this Catholic church is full of saints. And I, when I read about it, sure. I'm saying to myself, mm -hmm. how come a Catholic girl could do that? Could do that and God says, what, what, what God has put together, let no man rent asunder. So when it happened, I was totally shocked. I almost died. The children, they suffered. Yes. We, we suffered. Everyone suffers. Everybody suffers. Everyone suffers. Everyone suffers. So mm -hmm. you're going to get a divorce. Yes. Yeah, so and, and you're going to try and get, you go over to your sister, mm -hmm. try and get some counsel and so. 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 But she, your sister's going to tell you too. She said, um, you can do it. All your life, you're being pampered. Mm -hmm. You said, mommy pampered you. David pampered you, and now you feel that you cannot do it. He mm -hmm. said, but you can do it because there are some women here in the United States who have gone through these things. Mm -hmm. And now they're working in the Senate and that. He said, you can do it can do because it. you used to work at the Postmaster General. You acted as Postmaster General once. Mm -hmm. you, you acted as Permanent Secretary once. Mm -hmm. He said, you have worked in those senior positions. You yes. can do it. Don't get frightened and, and want to <laughs> give up. Huh? Just give up. give up. He said, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. And she scolded me. No mm -hmm. school, but a good she, firm, she gave firm me a talking. firm. She didn't pet me up and this yes. and that because I would have collapsed if she yes. had done that. Mm -hmm. So when she, I needed it, yeah. and I yeah. said, you know what she's saying is true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she's and I and and her husband said, remember the children, remember the children, Alice, remember the children. 
the neck that came, the neck went to and the frequent confessions. Then like once, remember Jesus is in the priest. He said, Thus says the Lord God, I myself will tend my flock in Ezekiel. And one night after I was going through those terrible times, Jesus, after confession, he came like in the night and flashed his light in my mind. Flashed his light. And then healing came and then I started to forgive the young lady. Mm -hmm. And then well, it took some so, time. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be confession and forgiveness. Huh? And forgiveness. That's going to help mm -hmm. you. Because like you said, time does not heal a broken oh. heart. It's and just, then like I said, it, uh, it's going to be... At Christ in his parish, it, was, it isn't time. It isn't mm -hmm. time. It's a new love. And that new love was Jesus. Because I started to pray more. Mm -hmm. I started to go to Mass. I begin to... I turned to him more than... Yeah, everything I was turned now to him, to, to him, to Jesus, because I said, no, this is what you know. I won't get hurt again. Mm -hmm. I will turn to Jesus. I'll give my whole life to him. I won't go through that again. Yeah. I said, uh-uh. But it must have been a hard struggle raising five children, five children. and mm -hmm. watching him go through. Although you did say, um, in his favor, he did help you to support. Yes, he helped. He helped mm -hmm. to support the children. Huh? Mm -hmm. he was in that sense. And before he passed, he converted. And that is good, because he was an atheist. Uh -huh. Before he died, he converted. Okay, yes. so, so let's take it right there. So he did convert. Mm -hmm. You were able to baptize him. Mm -hmm. He was in agreement with everything. Of course he was. And, uh, Father Leslie gave him the anointing of the sick okay. before he passed on. Uh -huh. And you said he was able to give a confession as well? Uh -huh. And amazingly, you know, there's this little part with sin. Mm -hmm. um, when the young lady said when she wanted to get in, you know, the bed with him the night, he said, no, 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 <laughs> uh -huh. no, no. He, apparently when you reach a certain point, when God cleanses yes. you, like it takes you out of Egypt then. Uh -huh. You don't want to go back. You don't want to go back. So he then. didn't want any so of that again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So now at, you go back to work because you have to. You yeah. have the kids. 42 years old, you're going back to work. Mm -hmm. And um, just, rem just for, for the viewers to know, you worked 34 years with the government. Overall. So you started at the bottom from the <laughs> and worked right up, huh? mm -hmm. right up from junior clerk. Right up into what? Um, to an administrative, administrative officer. officer. Uh -huh. And then even sometimes. Uh, actually, as once as permanent secretary of the Ministry of Energy. Okay, so you had a good period working with government. Right. And also, you, um, with your education, you take yes. your, you, you, got, you have different courses you took as long as, as well as your business administration mm -hmm. you completed. Yes. At, at UB. At UB. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're rushing it now as we come to the end. Uh, where are you today with your life? You know, I know we know you're into everything, but um, the theme, if, if I can say a theme for this, for this, for Miss Linda's story today, uh, theme for your life was visions and dreams and biblical knowledge. All of this is to share with others God's salvation and the av avoid the fires of hell as well as God's existence. Huh? And you his want mercy. and his mercy. It's very merciful. Yes, it's merciful. And the, the, when I asked you for a Bible quote, you said John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only, only begotten Son, that whoever believeth in him may not perish but have eternal life. But may have eternal life. And you and I were also talking about the hundred days. Um, this year is the hundred anniversary, hundred anniversary of Our Lady of Fatima, who appeared a hundred years ago in Portugal. And um, so every month in the church, she would appear for six months on the 13th of the month. And um, so, and her message is the same thing, Linda, conversion. conversion. Eternal salvation, mm -hmm. pray the rosary. So please, viewers, what Miss Linda has is what we too have been given. It's just that she is working on it. The rest of us, like she says, are afraid to, to step out into the deep. Huh? We're just not doing it. So beside, we have, you have trust, you have obedience and surrender. So with all of this, you're going to Mass daily. What else is on your routine, a daily routine? Okay. I would help with the washing of the linens. Uh -huh. I would read at times. You know, I have my day when I read. Mm -hmm. read. I help with the singing on Sundays. I'm and she has a beautiful voice. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, basically help, you know. Mm -hmm. to but Mass daily. The rosary. Mass, yes, pretty rosary. Pr pr practically living the Fatima message. Yes, exactly. So your, your life message. can be really connected to the Fatima because, um, message. Yeah. My whole thing is mm -hmm. I want to get to heaven. And she came with the message on how to get to heaven. Assist at the daily mass. Mm -hmm. Pray mm -hmm. the rosary, imitate her virtues, her profound humility, 
her ardent charity, her lively faith, her blind obedience, her continual mental prayer, her surpassing purity, angelic yeah. sweetness, her divine wisdom, her heroic patience. Wow. <laughs> Her, so her a daughter, a daughter of Fatima. Her We're divine. looking at a daughter of Fatima <laughs> right here. He confesses sins at least once mm -hmm. a month. Assists at the five for Saturday devotions, and the father reveals his mysteries to little ones. You know, nobody's more pure and little mm -hmm. than Mary. Mm -hmm. She so, is the immaculate conception. She was born without sin. The father picked her. So we have it all there. Yeah, all there, to get to all heaven. there in the Lady of Fatima. Lady so, like I said, it's yeah. October 13 concludes this this 100th uh, anniversary. So I would definitely encourage all of you all to look into the story of Our Lady of Fatima appearing to the three children in, at Portugal and the miracles that took place there as well. But um, so you also, you got, tell me you got your mother, your mo mother converted? Yes, mm -hmm. she was baptized a Catholic. Okay. Your and, brother? Uh, did my you brother, brother, Colin, mm -hmm. Colin Ellington. Mm -hmm. And... Um, well, you said your husband at the end. At the end. A niece. A niece got married at Holy Redeemer. Mm -hmm. And her husband, that is a pastor, his dad is a pastor. Mm -hmm. And he got, he said, yes, I believe you. And he, he said, I will get my sacraments in the Catholic Church. Uh -huh. And he did. He got married there and everything. So there are fruits, you know. Yes. People are coming in. Wind, They're sure. coming in. Mm -hmm. and, and like you said, those who doubted you before are beginning to, to, to understand and, mm -hmm. and, and realize that. Mm -hmm. That you were just one of the stronger ones, that the rest of us are just just not, not ready to go out there as well. Huh? But um, you and you still babysit your grandchildren. Yes, yes. But Linda, your life is of prayer and one of evangelizing. Huh? So that's it. It sums it up: a life of prayer and evangelizing. Linda, thank you. Thank you so much for being here with me today, for being here on this show to let the viewers know your life, to come to understand more about you, and to understand more of this wonderful faith of the Catholic Church that leads us back home again. To Jesus. To back home to Jesus. So beautiful. Back home to eternal mm -hmm. salvation. Because it says in scriptures, the seed is the word of God, and the soul is Jesus Christ. Whoever finds Jesus Christ, so mm -hmm. he's a, he will have eternal life. He's right in the Catholic Church, in right the in tabernacle, he's alive, and he's and in the and priest, the, he's right there in the sacraments. So that's it. That lovely way to sum up. And I always have a few takeaways. And Linda's yes to God's call, despite her rejection, she still continued on. And please, this call is not only for Linda. We understand this. We all received this call at our baptism, but it was re-emphasized at our time of confirmation. Remember, we're called to be priest, prophet, and king. So all of us have received it. It's up to us now to give Jesus our yes to going out there and doing. If we could do one third of what Miss Linda is doing, we would be along that path that leading to our eternal salvation. And we close with our prayer. You said we had a little prayer here. O, o Mary, conceived without, without sin, sin pray, pray for us who have, have recourse, recourse to today. Thank you, viewers, for being with us here today. Uh, we'll be a get back here again next week. I'd like my unusual thank yous. Thank you to Linda. Thank you to thank you, you, the viewers. Nice having you, Linda. You. You. To our cameraman, we have Mark and Lewis. And as usual, I'd like to, ta to thank Tom Peterson for lending, allowing me to, to use his evangelmercial that you'll see uh, at the breaks of our show. He's um, from the, sh the EWTN show, Catholics Come Home. So please, you can tune in there at any time and see his show, or you can go to catholicscomehome.org. Thank you, viewers. Nice having you here with us today. God bless you. <laughs>